Okay, I'm Nate Marks, uh, entertainer from Who Gives a Shit. Um, I'm Nate Marks, and I uh, hosted the first Comedy Kitchen debut in Bethlehem, North Pennsylvania. Uh, North Bethlehem, anyway. And uh, headlining the show tonight was Tony Viagra, who's based out of the Harrisburg area. I'm not really sure too much about the specifics. Uh, uh, realistically, Tony's from Motel 6. <laughs> okay, is it, what, what town, because there's a lot of Motel 6s, what town is Motel 6? All six? of them. All of them. So Tony Viagra came from any of the Motel 6s in Center, Pennsylvania. And he came a two, three hour distance to make it here for the Comedy Kitchen debut. Uh, he has been stigmatized or blessed, depending on how you look at it, as the gangster of comedy. Am I wrong? I'm the gangster of comedy. Motherfucking hell yeah, Tony. We'll, we'll give a cheers to that. This might my, my, uh, little cheers to that. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. I was not familiar with the song, your actual anthem. Uh, from the Ghetto Boys, I believe, mm -hmm. are the composers. It is the Ghetto Boys. The Ghetto Boys. I don't, I'm not get, a very educated band, but I, 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 I can read. They only hit song. They only hit song. It's a great song. And the Ghetto Boys, they had this psychic power to know that Tony, Vi Tony Viagra would someday need this theme song because they made it basically exclusively for him. It's his theme song. There's no other way to look, look around it. And someday I hope to be able to do a, a video with the Ghetto Boys. Well, shit, we're going to find out who these ghetto boys are, where they're from, and we're going to pitch your comedy to them. Yeah, one of them just recently passed away. That's the power of your humor, or is yeah, it? Yeah, real, honestly, one of them recently passed away. Oh, shit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, bad news. Tony, how I'm long have you been doing comedy? Oh, a long time. A uh, long time. Uh, I, uh... First got interested in the temple of the Air Force, which is about what, uh, what forty years ago, and you know, as you know, since you're seventy and two, you know, it's, it's an evolution, it's a process, you know, and, and, uh, and all this fucked up shit that's happened to me. That's how I write material. No, and it's been a process, an evolution. You know, I developed this character uh, a long time ago. I developed a couple other characters too, who I don't use too much. But Tony Viagra is the guy, and he's the gangster, and uh, I write all my own material, and uh, out in central Pennsylvania, it's really tough to get, uh, there's a lot of comedy opportunities out there, and I don't, so I, you know, I've done a lot of open mics, we've both done that, a lot of open mic bullshit, and that's fine, uh, there's not a lot of opportunities in central Pennsylvania, and, uh, but Things have been pick, picking up for me, and I recently headlined a show out in Oregon. I was a headliner out there, and uh, I recently headlined a show in Lancaster County two weeks ago, and that was great. Uh, tonight's show was fantastic. I had a blast. Great people. Great to be here. Great to headline here. I met some really super people, especially Ashley. <laughs> She's awesome. And uh, it's good, and uh, I'm just going to keep. Do a stand up because stand up is the best part of my life. And it's, it's the only good part of my life right now, too. Fucking A. Everything yeah. else is everything else like shit. How young are you, Tony? Uh, you really want to know, like, uh, it's my birthday, first of all. Today? Yeah. Are you no kidding way. me? What the fuck? Can I get Tony, how could you be oh so discreet? God. I told Mary earlier. You should have told, told me. I had a birthday surprise. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? I'm. I hear, you know, it's no secret, I'm, I'm fucking 66. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. 66. If so I'm pretty, not as your I'm pretty fucking old, you know. I yeah, Tony, you, it. you don't have to. It's a fucking oh, number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a number, you know, and I'll do stand up like I said. You're I, fucking, today's your birthday, March 7th? Yeah. Ashley. Happy birthday Ashley, for the robots Ashley, at home. Happy Ashley, birthday Ashley, to Tony Blackman. I've gotten you something for your birthday. Why have you done it? 66. So. Yeah. I'll keep doing stand-up as long as I possibly can, and as I say, like five years from now, I'll be doing stand-up the Alzheimer's unit, <laughs> wearing an adult diaper, no pants. With a hard on, right? No pants, just an adult diaper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need one joke, and I'll keep telling the same joke over and over, because they can't remember shit in there, and I'll keep laughing. It'll be the best stand-up ever. <laughs> 
How long ago did you come up with the the name Tony well, Vigra? Oh man, a long time ago. I was out. Um, I used to do a lot of a lot of road distance road biking. You know the pedal type. Mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of that, and I'd go out riding solo. You'd be out there a couple hours riding, and you know, your mind goes you know here and there everywhere. And I just was out riding one day, came up with this Tony Viagra. And I just thought, oh, that's really cool, really funny, and that's who I'm going to be, Tony Viagra. And then I just developed the character, and and I heard the Ghetto Boys song, and I thought, yes, it's a perfect fit, and. Uh, yeah, it feels good to be a gangster and hmm. playing an angry gangster comedy and it's, it just sticks. Oh know? yeah. And I've been developing this character and uh, uh, writing material and uh, write all my own material. And I, I developed uh, another character too that I rarely ever do. So we'll just stick with Tony Viagra. Hmm. And I write tons of stuff. I write tons of stuff. I also come up with a lot of video comedy ideas. That unfortunately I have no one to produce, but I keep my ideas anyways, in case I ever meet someone who uh, can't produce them. And uh, uh, I was fortunate uh, enough, for, very fortunate a couple minutes ago to open for Doug Stanhope, and that was a lot of fun. That was fun, and open in front of 500 people. And uh, I'll tell you, Doug Stanhope's crowd is my crowd, I can tell you that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was great. That's the fucking best night of my life. Well, just so you know, you do have a fan base, and people do want to help promote and support and uh, okay. campaign and awareness. Uh, my friend Mike is a good producer, yeah. an editor. Okay. I have the highest respect for my fans, and I love my fans, and I'm just so so grateful that they think I'm funny and want to come here and do stand up. I'm just very grateful. Well, you're one of a kind, Tony. We appreciate you. Well, it's good to be different. No, I'm not a I'm not saying up there wearing a you know t-shirt and blue jeans. You know I'm a little different, and that's okay. Yeah. How long have you been doing the bow tie, straw hat, sports oh, jacket? Like six years, I guess. Okay. Six years. Yeah. So you started like sixty then. Oh, okay. with this character, yeah. yeah. This character. Yeah. If you don't mind my asking, I don't want to break your character here. What's your real name? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Let's say Tony Viagra's my real name. Tony Viagra. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. And uh, George Carlin and I, I'm sure you remember George Carlin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, George and I have one thing in common. We're both Air Force veterans. Mm -hmm. That's nothing you have in common. <laughs> and his career went, and you're funny as shit. And his career went a little bit different than mine has. <laughs> because he, you know, George, he did a, a thing in the early 70s about what like, was an album came out called Class Clown. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Class Clown? Yeah, I know the record. It's hilarious. It's so fucking funny. And I saw George in Harrisburg a long, like 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 25 years ago, I saw George in Harrisburg perform. And he came out, his first 15 minutes, he just fucking killed for 15 minutes, man. Fucking killed. Fucking killed. People are, uh, must have been hurting themselves laughing so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, George passed on, he passed away a while ago, actually. But he's a lot older than me, too. But I, I hope that I can. So they become one tenth as successful as George Carlin. I'd be happy. I mean, he's a very talented guy. Really fucking talented. Yeah. Tony, you've been nicknamed the Gangster of Comedy. Yes. With good reason. Can you tell us one of your most uh, exciting examples of getting kicked out or unplugged? Oh yeah. Boycotted? Yeah. Oh, I can tell you a couple. Uh, oh, one. Uh, I got a big boy in the stamp at this uh, surprise birthday party for this guy's wife. No, this isn't the lesbian. This is the lesbian. Okay. And I got there and uh, uh, it was turned out to be a lesbian birthday party. <laughs> and then the, the husband, the husband, uh, uh, whatever you fuck you want to call it, the husband. Uh, I think you call it brides. The husband. <laughs> The husband, the, 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 the strap on, we call him the strap on. He, he, uh, he, uh, he was a little cool and he hired me, or she, or the strap on hired me. And, and, uh, but then the surprise birthday girl wasn't cool with Tony. So, so she got me thrown out of her fucking uh, lesbian birthday party. <laughs> and, uh, I got paid. And I, I just like that sentence. Yeah, I got paid. I, you know, I got some booze. And I got you paid. got paid, though. I got paid. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I got paid. But then what really sucked about this. Do they have really good sucked, face sandwiches? What? 
open face sandwich. No, two face sandwiches. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, what really sucked about it, like the, the was it an all you can eat? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's all the hair you could eat. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just trying to yeah. pitch yeah. some lesbian yeah. puns at you. Yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah, and it was uh, what really sucked about this was, you know, the strap one, the fake guy or whatever the fuck, the husband, you know, I did everything I told the husband that I was going to do. I didn't change anything, and the husband was cool with that. But then because of the, the wife, the surprise birthday girl didn't like it, to save face, the husband, the rotten fucking cocksucker, went on, <laughs> went on gig salad and trashed me in a shit for doing exactly what I told the husband I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And that was a really, a really low fucking cocksucking move yeah. uh, that was. Yeah. Yeah. And just to save face with, with uh, the surprise birthday girl. And that really sucked. And uh, so, no more lesbian birthday parties for Tony Viagra, okay? No more. No more. No more. No more. Hmm. They got a lesbian birthday party. Fuck off. Let them eat cake. Let them eat shit. No, it was Mary Antoinette second. Let them eat shit. They're not getting Tony Viagra. Let me ask you this. Um, Somebody that I have not, I have not seen you do shows, but a mutual friend comedian of ours told me that you did a comedy benefit for a family friendly friendly audience and you promised to be family friendly and as soon as you went up there you did a cunt joke not true this isn't true that's not family not true okay i don't really know what, what he's talking about honestly. oh all right somebody told me that you did a family show and that they kicked you off right away no that's not true my apologies this is what what happened i think what this is how facts get distorted and, okay and what happened I, I think what you might be referring to is when I opened for Raymond, the Amish comedian, mm-hmm. at the Harrisburg Comedy Zone mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, uh, the owner of the, the Comedy Zone restaurant, Nick, thinks I'm very funny. And he told me mm-hmm. that he, he wanted me to uh, open for Raymond, who's like the biggest draw that they get mm-hmm. at that place. You ever hear Raymond, the Amish comedian? Oh, yes. He's okay. from the dance, actually. Yeah, right. And well, he's our biggest draw. I have never seen him. Yeah. Uh, I don't no, know where he's there. Anyway, so, anyway, so. Uh, Nick, the owner, told me, he said, you know, go or sell here. don't talk to anybody, you know, don't talk to the manager of the comedy club. And, and uh, okay, so I followed Nick, Nick's the owner, okay. So then the, the, the manager, I guess mean, he got a hair up his ass, the uh, owner went over his head, you know, and he said the host that night, over talked to me, I don't want to say his name because he's a real fucking asshole, I know, and he said, over talk to me, and he said, you're going to get Two minutes, yeah. Two fucking minutes. Can you believe that? And he said, "How do you want to be introduced?" I said, "Tony Wagner and the Gangster Comedy." He said, "Fuck." He said, "You sit over there, so I'm gonna do, you know, ten minutes of my boring bullshit. Then I'm gonna bring you on." <laughs> and and uh, so, okay, I sit over there. He tells me to sit by the stage. He does this ten minutes of fucking goofy shit talking about his dog's vulva. <laughs> talking about his dog's fucking vulva. Well, Amish um, Raymond Comic? I mean, Raymond the Amish Comic? No, I'm talking about the host. Okay. The host, the douchebag host. Mm-hmm. Talking about his dog's vulva. That's, you know, that's as funny as a fucking cancer, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, and then uh, he calls me, you know, up, you know and then, you know, I told him, I would get the douche. Fuck. He, he says, okay, here's some local guy. So, what do you mean, local guy? Tony Wagner, yeah, I know because some you know, try to try to make a piece of shit out of me right away. Right. You Downsize know? your yeah. efforts. Yeah. It's okay, so I'm going to stage and boom, the place was crowded, you know, and because of Raymond and I boom, you know, right between the eyes, you know, and I said, anybody here ever eat rotten cut? And they went nuts. <laughs> the place went whole place went fucking crazy. And then Cunt. Yeah. You know cunt is right? Yes. Okay. Because I'll translate if you don't. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I can do that on my phone because I, I know a Chinese lady that I should do know lady from Taiwan uh-huh. and I do translate bullshit for her sometimes but, <laughs> but uh, she's the one who's the Christian I was talking about mm. and my say and, uh, but anyway so and then okay finish with like, you know two fucking minutes you know so I finish and you know the place was going crazy and uh, I think that's what your friend might be referring to that is the comedy side. 
I didn't want the what the manager did just to be a really rotten fucking prick. He never talked to me all night. Never said a thing to me. He went on gig sale. He said, "This is show nothing to do with gig They took and trash me to shit on gig sale because I said cut, and you never say cut before the main attraction. You never do that. Oh, I didn't know that was. That. I never do that either. But that's his rule. That's his asshole rule. Wow. And, then, and I called gig sale. I said, "I said, but gig sale." He said, "You're right. You put it down." Hmm. You know. But what a rotten fucking scumbag cocksucker prick move that was. Yeah, sure. I would yeah. think Kong is a good warmer. Well, you know, if you have these rules, man, you better come over and tell me first. That right. You don't want me to do this, you don't want me to do that. And don't play this cocksucker, you know, cocksucker shithead move with me. So, you know, I, was, I have no tolerance for pricks. I can't stand being around pricks. It's a good thing I'm not a urologist. And. <laughs> So maybe that might be what you're referring to. And that was not a friendly family night. Sure. But it's how things get distorted and blown out of proportion. Well, the truth is, I've never met you. I've never seen you. Right. I've only seen you on the uh, robot internet world. And I've only heard legendary you see my YouTube? anecdotes. You watch me on YouTube? Yeah, there's okay. one good right, there's one. One, on one good thing on there. Yeah. Hopefully there will be more hopefully. coming up soon. Hopefully. Set tonight, yeah, but hopefully. Hopefully. I will tell you what. I was smitten. And I relate and I... I commend you on your bold, valiant efforts in making comedy for fucking real. People are so, you know, pussy footed. Oh, fuck them, you know? You know, you're you, know real. What, what, you know, if, if, if my comedy isn't their thing, then stay the fuck out, you know? And yeah. so when I get, when I get there with my crowd, it's just, it's the greatest thing about the world when I'm with my crowd, like it was tonight, like I was two weeks ago, and like, it does the animal. Oh, with my crowd, it's fucking heaven. Mm-hmm. Just fucking head on. And if it's not my crowd, they can go go fuck themselves. And I say that I say that in a nice way. I say that in a friendly way. Mm-hmm. If I'm not your thing, you can go fuck yourself and get the fuck out, okay? In a nice way. Be my friend, anyways, you know. Wow. Any any upcoming shows or anything we should know about? I'll be in two all? weeks I'll be at the Broadway Comedy Club in New York City. Broadway Comedy Club in New York City. Yeah, two weeks from tonight. Fucking angry, that's and, great. Yeah, I'm going to be a uh, uh, part of the coronavirus tour. <laughs> coronavirus comedy tour. It's going to go viral on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, after that, uh, I'll probably get the virus and croak for about a week after that. Very young fuck, tell me. And, then, uh, and then I'm going to be, at the end of the month, I'm going to be at the Ellicott City Comedy Festival. I think it's March 28th. I'm doing that. Hmm. And uh, I was told that you know the guy running that I won't say his name, but if he, if he likes me, I'll get some beans out of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going down there, and then after that, man, I, I'm, I'm hoping things pick up. Then after that, as far as things go, I'm sure they will. Well, the things have been picking up for me. Well, yeah, they're picking up, especially the garbage truck. That's why it always pick up. You know? <laughs> yeah. Every Tuesday, things pick up. Every Tuesday, things pick up. Yeah, the garbage truck comes. Well, I want to say thank you so much, Tony, for coming out and sharing a little bit of insight with us. My pleasure. I want you to know that uh, in my, I'm just with my fucking humble, stupid ass amateur opinion, you're the real deal. You're a living legend, and I want to say that you're an inspiration. I've known about you for quite a while. Good. And you're the reason I want to keep doing it. And I don't give a fuck awesome. what people say because don't Tony Viagra is out there. Don't Tony Viagra is one of these guys that's a real deal. Yeah, and this is what you got to be, man. You got to be real. You got to be, be real. real. And I want to tell you, I heard your set tonight. I got to tell you, you're a young guy. You're very talented. Thanks, man. And you have a huge upside. And I'm not bullshitting. You're going to the truth. You're a very talented young guy. You have a huge upside. You do. I appreciate it. It's true. I'm not gonna bullshit you. It's fact. I wouldn't say that it wasn't true. I wouldn't say it's a sub. You know, well, if I subbed, I no, you don't. fucking you're, rip me up no, over the new one. No, you're a very talented <laughs> young guy. You have a lot of talent. And uh, the sky's the limit for you. Well, have you heard of a uh, dildo solo on a banjo before? That was not what I did. That was. That was <laughs> where my talent and no charisma. Playing a banjo is not an easy flat. thing to do. Well, you like you like double It's flesh. pussy repellent, practically. No, <laughs> Nobody fucking wants to eat your banjo. It's tough to play a fucking banjo. That's the toughest thing to play. Yeah, yeah you know, it is what it is. But it's, it's tough to play. I know it is. 
It's a tough market. You need Bella Fleck. He plays a banjo, right? I've seen him. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you know it. I, yeah. I am a big Bella Fleck fan. I've yeah. seen Bella Fleck once. Yeah. Yeah, he's a unique, talented musician. I've he, seen him on TV. I, uh, I did the dildo thing. He refused to do so. <laughs> cool. You know, we have our differences on banjo approaches. Yeah, but... Yeah, he's he's a very talented musician, and uh, but you have, you have tremendous potential. Uh, that you got you should know that you do. Well, thanks, man. I do dishes at this fucking restaurant. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Just keep doing. Just keep doing stand up. Thanks, man. Just keep doing your thing. Spend the money doing dishes. Any words of advice for any aspiring comedians yeah, sure. out there? Oh yeah, yeah. The best advice and the only advice is keep doing it. That's the only advice anyone can give you is keep doing it and don't give up. If somebody tries to put you down or gets in your way, put them the fuck off and keep doing it. That's the only advice anyone can give you. There's no other advice in that. Anything else behind that is bullshit. Hmm. Keep doing it. Yeah. That's the only advice. Keep doing it. Never give up. People try to put you down, especially if they see that you have some talent and stuff like People, pricks will try to put you down and fuck with you. Just tell them the fuck off. I keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. That's my advice. That's where we're gonna end it, Tony. This has been a real sensational experiment. It's been fun. It's been experience. Fun. Tony, it's fun. thank you, Tony. My Appreciate pleasure. you. My pleasure. I hope to hope to do the show with you again sometime. Yeah. That's probably gonna happen very likely very soon. I hope so. If I have fun tonight. I got nothing else going on. I'm hoping you need to arrive. <laughs> there should be some flaws. All right, well, thank you. Thank you.